Good morning. Hi, it's Monday the 1st of November. I've got my coffee. Uh, the sun is just coming up and welcome to the first proper cop pit stop. So today I wanted to give you an update on what's happened transport related so far in the cop. Well, not too much to report. One thing, uh, I saw that there was a climate train arrive over the weekend. So a train going from Amsterdam through to Brussels, through to London, and then all the way up to Glasgow, carrying about 500 different activists, NGOs, uh, delegates, the media, all coming together to not just travel sustainably, but also discuss how to make transport more sustainable and uh, build that dialogue about how train travel across the world can be a great climate solution. Uh, be really interesting to see what comes out of that and um, it has obviously drawn a lot of media attention too. Other than that, what else has been happening? Well, it's been the G20 in Rome, right? So lots of leaders have been getting together and discussing what can be or should be achieved during Glasgow and they've they agreed this climate deal which fundamentally said yes we want to keep the the 1.5 degree target alive but beyond that there wasn't too much substance and i suppose there's not too much you can do at that level in terms of developing the process around how do we you know, distribute finance to uh, the poorest people how do we phase out coal rather than just say that we're not going to invest in it in the future that's a lot of what's going to be on the agenda for Glasgow It's a very big agenda, but it's important to know that Glasgow is about building that, that those processes, those mechanisms that will make that 1.5 degree target still feasible. Um, unlike Paris, which was this long build up to set, signing up to this with this one agreement. Um, so yeah, there's, it's, it's a start and we'll see how those all the world leaders coming together over the next couple of days actually in Glasgow to see what comes out of that and whether that can galvanise more momentum uh, for the delegates at the COP. Two things I would say have a look at um, from a transport perspective is see what the USA and see what China are doing. So starting with China, they launched their updated NDC uh, towards the end of last week and a lot of the uh, the experts are saying well not too much has changed um, there's a few improvements um, there's things like adding in renewable capacity i think 1200 gigawatts um, within the next decade now that's exciting because if that gets directed towards electrified transport then we know that that's going to really reduce the emissions of how we move people and things around in that country so that's great news the on the on the other side we have the USA who um, have launched their Build Back Better framework. This is very much focused on bringing the American public along to say, yeah, this is something that we need to do for our economy. You know, climate action is a really good thing for jobs, and that might stimulate a lot more interest and um, in in various topics such as electric vehicles and um, there's going to be a lot of growth here for new industry to to develop so again i think there's going to be some kind of competition between china and usa in terms of capacity for growing electric vehicles in the usa north america particularly wanting to catch up with the levels of adoption and the levels of production that we're seeing in china for for many years now now all in all, there's not too much enthusiasm that you can see in the media, as you've probably seen. Lots of doom and gloom in the headlines. Uh, so it all feels a little bit pessimistic right now. Uh, so I produced a, a short blog summarising a few reasons why I think we can be cautiously optimistic. And one part there, again, comes back to electric vehicles. I've got this graph here, um, just very simply shows you that yes, Electric vehicles have come from nowhere, <laughs> Copenhagen, right to being a real key uh, solution in 2021. Uh, so I think it's going to be an emblem for this particular COP and um, it's going to highlight what types of solution can be developed if we all put our mind to it. Now, finally, there was one other bit of news. The UN have launched a climate change global innovation hub. 
Uh, this is a virtual space to bring together problem solvers and solution providers um, for anything to do with climate action. Now, I think this is an opportunity if you are working in transport hardware or software to engage via this platform, perhaps with people in other markets than you're used to, um, to, yeah, to see if there's, there's more ways that you can use your technology. Uh, but it's very, very much at the early days of this development. They haven't really fully launched it yet. There's a website, um, but it says it's gonna have an API, so it must be good. Um, and there's going to be um, a lot more coming out about it over the next few months. But just that's just one thing to have a look at, and I'll share a link to this in the notes. There's going to be many more events happening today, so I'll have much more to report on tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, otherwise, have a great day. Thank you.